All right, so what we're going to be going over here today, guys, is we're going to do this little activity where we will calculate the latent heat effusion of water. Okay, it's relatively straightforward, provided you follow the instructions to the letter. Okay, it's pretty cookbook otherwise. Okay, if you don't follow the instructions, though, it really doesn't work very well. Okay, uh, so we're not going to have to do uh, you know the the problem or anything here, but we'll still identify what our variables are going to be. Okay, the idea of the experiment is this: we are going to take some snow from outside. We're going to bring it in, and we're going to have some room temperature water sitting in another beaker. Okay, we're going to add the snow to that water and start stirring. What's going to happen to the temperature of the water? It's going to decrease. Why? Right. The, the snow is absorbing the energy in order to cause it to melt. All right. Conveniently, today the temperature outside is just below zero, so the temperature of the snow is just below zero. So it's perfect. It's not like when we do this and it's minus 30 and we actually have to warm the snow up a little bit. Okay. So this is going to work really well simply because we have temperature of the snow being about right today. Okay. So we'll put that in there. You'll start stirring it. Once the temperature gets to zero, all right, or if it stops changing, so because sometimes on the thermometers, if they're not perfect, perfectly calibrated, it might be like two degrees. As soon as your temperature stops changing, reach in and pull out the rest of the snow. Okay, now you have to with the snow, you have to make sure that you don't take too much of the liquid water with it. Okay, so you reach in, you grab the snow, and give it a quick squeeze, a little bit of a shake, and throw it in the sink. Put it in the sink. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's not a snowball fight. I don't want a snowball fight going on in the chem lab. Okay, uh, so just and then put it in the sink. Make sure you've kind of got all the little chunks and everything out as best you can. All right, then will there be more water in the beaker than there was before? Okay, is the change in water, the change in the amount of water, equal to the amount of snow that melted? Yes. All right. So what we have to know here is our initial volume of water, our final volume of water, and our temperature change. Those are really the only three, three things that we need to record. Right? The temperature change and the Im initial amount of water will allow us to calculate how much energy was lost by the water. Using what formula? E equals mc delta t. Right? Because the, the water is losing kinetic energy. Right? The amount of energy lost by the water must be the amount of energy that was used to do what? Where did we say that energy went? Okay, we had this water. We put snow in it. The water got colder. Where did the energy from the water go? To the snow. Okay, so the energy from the water, the energy the water lost that we just calculated with E equals mc delta t must be equal to the amount of energy needed to melt the ice. Everybody follow? Now, now that we have the new volume of water, do we know how much ice melted? You just told me that it was yes a few minutes ago. Okay, so if we have that new volume of water, we know how much ice melted, we can figure out what LF is. Because we know the mass of the ice that melted, okay, and we know how much energy was used to do it. All right, so what we need to record while we're in there is our initial volume of water, okay, our final volume of water, and the change in temperature of the water. Those are the only three things we need to to record, then we'll come back here and we'll calculate the latent heat of fusion ourselves and see what kind of number we get. Hold on, we're not going to go quite yet. Okay, so that means essentially our responding variable is energy, okay, or changes in energy because that's what we're going to be looking for. Okay, the manipulated variable, okay, is going to be putting the ice in the water, okay, changing the the properties of the water. Okay, controlled variables. Obviously, we want everyone to be using kind of similar size beakers, same amount of water, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so uh, what you're going to do is you're going to carefully measure 200 milliliters of water, okay, with a graduated cylinder. So you take the big graduated cylinders out of the cupboard, they're 100 milliliters. Fill them to the 100 mark, how many times? Twice, okay. All right, so 200 mils of water, okay, R make sure you have it as close to that as possible. Try and be exact, okay. Pour the water into the beaker, stir the water, measure and record the initial temperature, okay. Then go out and uh, add approximately 100 grams of ice. Here's how you know you have approximately 100 grams of ice. Take a 600 milliliter beaker outside and fill it with snow. Pack it. Okay. If you do that, that's about 100 grams worth of snow. Okay. Everybody with me on that one? Here's the thing about going outside to get the snow. That door is now locked. 
So make sure you leave somebody there. Or we'll wave to you out the chem lab window while you sit out there and shiver. Okay? So make sure you leave a group member there to open the door for you. Okay? Uh, so continue stirring. Okay? So you add this ice and then you stir. All right? And you're going to stir with the glass stirring rods. It's going to be very zen in there because it's this very peaceful glass on glass sound. It's very nice. Okay? So we'll have that going on. As soon as that temperature gets to zero or on your thermometer stops moving, pull out the remaining ice. Okay? And then we'll record our new volume of water with the graduated cylinder. And then we'll come back in here. Everybody with me there? Yes? Okay, so initial temperature, final temperature, initial volume, final volume. So there's four things, okay, that we have to record. Everybody got it. Okay, now remember, you are using, you're going to need two 600 milliliter beakers in order to do this. In fact, you know what? Let's say use, yeah, let's get, just get two of these, one for the snow and one for the water. All right? Everybody follow? Okay. Questions? All right, let's go across the chem lab then. So what I want you to do now, now that you have your data, okay, is I want you to do analysis questions one and two. Okay, I want you to calculate the latent heat of fusion for water with your data. All of you. Yeah. You can work together if you want. I just want you to do it. All right, so follow the instructions in one and two. I'll give you about five minutes, and then we'll go through it together, and then we'll be done. All right, so uh, what's that? I am going to hand out your review while you guys are doing that, yep. Okay, listen up here, guys. Gonna, just going to go through this here. Now, here's the logic in this, because I've got a lot of people that are they're using 2.116 when they do the E equals MC delta T formula. The ice was melting. When it's melting, is it changing temperature? Remember the heating curve of water? During a state change, does temperature change? No. So what was changing? The water. The water that you initially had, that 200 grams of water you started with, was what was changing temperature. So you take your E equals MC delta T here, okay? and for everybody, this calculation is going to be pretty much the same. Okay? You're going to have 200 grams here as your mass. You're going to use 4.2 because it's water. Okay, and you're going to multiply it by your temperature change, which I think for most people is probably around 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so okay, when we look at that, we're going to have okay, 200 times 4.2 times whoop, times 20. Okay, that gives us 16,800 joules. So that's how much energy the water lost. Okay? That's how much energy the water lost. That energy, okay, according to number 2 here, okay, according to the law of conservation of energy, okay, that energy had to go into the ice. All right? So that means that when I'm looking at how much energy was required to melt the ice, I have this formula and now I know what E equals. It's 16,800 joules. Everyone follow me on that part. Okay? Now, when you were done, you had more water than when you started, yes? Where did that water come from? The extra. From the snow. Okay? So, if you had 200 to start with, and you had, let's say, 240 when you were done, all right, the amount of ice that melted was 40. 40 grams worth of ice. So now I know what M is as well. So now I can go E over M equals LF. All right, so if we use the numbers I just made up, okay, 16,800 over 40 grams, now yeah, that's a little big, okay, but that's because I made up the numbers, okay, hopefully everybody else's numbers are a little bit better. In reality, you should have had around, oh, 50 to 60 milliliters of ice or, sorry, grams of ice melt in this experiment. Realistically, that's about how much should have melted. Okay? I know some groups had a lot less than that, like 10% of that. Okay? Um, so hopefully you were somewhere in that range and you're going to get it. But this is, how, this is how you do it. It's simply a, a law of conservation of energy application. Okay? We know, listening guys, 
we know that whatever energy the water lost had to be used to melt the snow. Okay? So that's where we go. All right. Have a good weekend, guys. Have a look over that final exam review package.